Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Côté from CDL Maple Sugar and Equipment. Today we are making this short video to go over the different measuring instruments that are available at CDL, both for measuring sap and maple syrup. The first instrument to measure the bricks in maple sap is the sap hydrometer. Here we have three models available with different ranges. We have 0 to 6 bricks, 0 to 15 bricks, and 10 to 25 bricks. It all depends on your needs, but you will notice that on the 0 to 6 brick scale, there's a lot more space between each brick's degrees. So if you don't have an RO and you're checking raw sap, you're going to have greater accuracy with this model. On the other end, if you have an RO, a reverse osmosis machine, you will most likely have to read above six bricks and you'll need to use the zero to 15. And if you're good at high bricks, you're gonna have to use the 10 to 25. We also offer a maple sap refractometer reading from 0 to 32 bricks. Really easy to calibrate. All you have to do is to place a few drops of distilled water here, close the little glass lid, and then take off the little blue cap. Using the screwdriver included with the refractometer, turn the screw while looking through here until the line is exactly at zero bricks. Once you do that, it's ready to use. So whether you have a concentrated or raw sap, you should be able to rix the breed level with this tool. For everyone with an RO machine, it is important to know the pH of your water, especially when running regular or acid washes. To do this, we offer a small pH tester, which comes with some calibration solutions. Very easy to use. You remove the small black cap and reading is done through the small sensor here. When you purchase it in the box, you also have uh, small packets of calibration solution that come with it. When calibrating, very simple, you just press the small calibration button here and the tool will tell you which solution to soak the small sensor in. The tool will then calibrate itself and will be ready to use. Then we have pH papers. It's kind of the same principle, except that it provides a much more visceral reading. So it's your job to determine visually the pH of the product by comparing it to the scale you see here. Often for regular washes, we are looking for a pH around 12. You just have to dip the end of the paper in your wash water and then compare it with the scale to get a pH of 12. As for acid washes, we are looking for a pH between 0 to 2.5. So same idea as the other papers. You open it and note here the different color scale. And you dip the paper in the acid wash water and repeat until you get the pH you want. We stuck a conductivity tester, same principle as the pH tester, it's the same calibration, very easy to use to know the conductivity of your permeate. We now have a selection of thermometers available at CDL that can also be used for processing syrup. We have a model here that's very popular thermometer with a wooden handle. It's a very well-known model, very precise and very durable too. We have another small model here that is really made for cooking with directions on making your most common value-added products. Very precise too. We also offer a small digital model here. It gives you a reading precise to a tenth of a degree. And we have a thermometer with a probe that is very, very precise too. It's the most expensive of all these models, but really offers an improved accuracy and with a display again reading to a tenth of a degree. We are now at a very important point 
which is the calibration of syrup. We often get questioned in our stores about which tool to use. I will go over the main features of each option with you and hopefully you should be able to choose which one suits you the best. Let's start with the hydrotherm. The hydrotherm allows you to determine the density of the syrup regardless of its temperature. In other words, whether your syrup is coming out of the evaporator or whether it's lukewarm or even cold, the hydrotherm will still give you a very precise reading. Basically, when using it, the syrup must be at the same level as the red line you see here. On the other hand, the hydrotherm, you have to let it work a little bit. It should be left on this in the syrup for 2-3 minutes so that it adjusts to the temperature of the syrup to have a good reading. Another tool we have here is the hydrometer. The hydrometer is an instantaneous reading and the syrup has to be very hot right off the evaporator. So if the syrup has started to cool down, the reading will not be precise. There's a reading for hot syrup and another one for cold syrup. When I say hot syrup, it's really coming out of the evaporator hot and cold means a little colder than room temperature. For both the hydrometer and the hydrotherm, there's not really any calibration that can be done. On the other hand, we can establish a correction factor to apply to either of these instruments using the density calibration solution that we have here. This is a 66 brick solution. It's disposable, so the method to test is to fill your cup with the calibration solution and then you dip the hydrometer or the hydrotherm in it. The difference between the level of the liquid and the red line, whether it's for the hydrotherm or the hydrometer, gives you the correction factor to apply. If I take the hydrotherm, for example, if my fluid level is two lines above the red line, I know I have to remove these two lines to have a precise Brix reading on my syrup. Moving on, we have two refractometer models. This one goes from 45 to 82 bricks, and this one, a digital model, can give us a very precise reading too. If I start with this one, same idea for the adjustment as the one for SAP we saw earlier. So it requires the small calibration solution here, which is also 66 bricks. To calibrate, you just put a few drops on the glass here, close the lid and remove the little blue cap. Then use the screwdriver provided with the equipment. And as before, turn it until the scale indicates 66 bricks. Rinse the equipment with hot water and you're ready to go. For the digital model, same principle, you can calibrate it with the same solution. To get an accurate reading with either of these two available models, your refractometer should be as close as possible to room temperature and ideally should not be exposed to freezing temperatures. Your syrup should also be at room temperature. To achieve that, you can use a small pipette and get a small sample of syrup. You then turn it upside down like that. You can either let it sit or put in a glass of lukewarm water to lower its temperature. If you drop hot syrup on it, uh, it can fog up the little glass prism here and it can change the result and give you bad data. So as mentioned, you always want your syrup and your instruments as close as possible to room temperature. Thank you very much for listening. Know that all these products are available in store and on our online store. If you have any questions, you can contact your local CDL store or your local CDL representative. Thank you and have a good season. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe and press the notification icon to get updates on new product videos.